Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game. And this is just a little bit of a experiment. Uh, I wouldn't call it a guide because it's probably not the best setup. But what I wanted to do was prepare cold water at around 5 degrees for growing sleet wheat. 5 degrees or less. Because sleet wheat, if we check it out here, requires a temperature between negative 55 and 5 degrees. Any warmer and it won't grow. Uh, so it grows in the wild really well, and that's a perfectly valid way to do it. And that's usually how I've been doing it at my base. I just go and collect it from the wild. Because when it grows in the wild, it doesn't need uh, 20 kilograms of water per cycle, and it doesn't need 5 kilograms of dirt per cycle, which is quite a lot of dirt and water. So I'll just kind of go through uh, my setup here. <laughs> I got power generation over here, which you could ignore. Uh, I'm just getting it from hydrogen down here. Uh, but the setup, let's just pause here and I'll show you the overlays. Uh, let's go with piping first. So I've got a water tank over here with 40 degree water. Now I am assuming I'm taking polluted water, I'm putting it through a sieve and I'm getting 40 degree water as my starting point. If your water is coming straight from a geyser, this will still work. It'll just take a bit longer. So the water comes in here. Uh, you can ignore this water going over here. That was. I'll talk about that later. You don't really need it though. So you send in uh, water, and I have a, a valve here set to 1,000 grams per second. If you set it higher, it may work, but you might get uh, kind of lock up in the system. So you limit the amount of water going through a valve, and there's like a three-way junction here. This goes into a bridge and comes out here, and then there's water from over here coming into a bridge and a water coming from here going into a bridge. So there's a three-way kind of... Uh, merging of water here that goes into the aqua tuner and based on some settings here basically i want to make sure that the water going into the aqua tuner is greater than 16 degrees because uh, the aqua tuner reduces the temperature by 14 degrees so if i sent in water below 14 for instance it would freeze and lock up so I set it to 16 to leave a little bit of wiggle room. And uh, so water goes in there. If it's if it happens to be um, lower than 16, then it comes around this way and merges back into the water supply. So it's merging kind of hot water at 40 degrees with water that was too cold to go through the aqua tuner. And there's a third set of water that comes around here and that comes from over on this side. So water coming out of the aqua tuner can be kind of variable temperatures here uh, between, well, lots of different temperatures. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a third sensor here, a liquid pipe, a thermo sensor that's right in the pipe that says if the temperature is, it says above, but because the way um, the liquid shutoff works, you could use a knock gate and use below. But I just said above. So if the water is less than 6 degrees, it'll come down here and go into this tank. And we can see the water in there is at about 3.9 degrees. And if it's warmer than that, it um, it will come up this way. And kind of recycle and kind of do this three-way merge again. And so if you let the system run, some packets fall down here. Some packets come back around here and re-merge. Uh, it's probably not the most optimal system. But uh, it's been working for me. I've ran it for many cycles. Well, tens of cycles, not hundreds of cycles. And at a thousand grams per second, I don't really get lockup. The lockup happens when too many packets merge together and things get backed up and it just doesn't work anymore. Let's speed things up here so you can just see it going faster. And we can take a look at some of the packets here. So they're going into the aqua tuner between like, or along this line between like 30, between six and 30-ish. Between, I guess between six and 40. And like I said, the, the packets that are too cold get looped around and merged and kind of diluted with warmer water so that they come back in. Let's slow things back down. And packets that come along here, if they meet the criteria of being cold enough, then they come through into the tank. There goes one. Uh, let's just watch. So this this packet here, 4.8 degrees. 
Looks good. Uh, 5.1. There goes a few big packets. So it generates a decent amount of water, and it's not using a whole lot of power. Now I have oil as my coolant here, and right now it's at minus 14 degrees. You would need to flush your coolant once in a while, or um, recycle the coolant through. Eventually this coolant will, will warm up to a point where the oil will get too hot. So you might want to put a thermo sensor in here and say if the oil gets, uh, I don't know, above, let's say, 50 degrees, pump in some new colder crude oil and take the hotter crude oil out. Actually, I would probably set it to something like uh, maybe 100 degrees. So if the crude oil gets to 100, take it out and maybe turn it into petroleum and bring in new uh, crude oil that's a little bit cooler. You could use other things as coolant, but I like I like using crude oil. You could also use polluted water. The nice thing about polluted water is you can let it heat up to a certain point, and then you could uh, filter it through a sieve and bring the temperature back down to 40. So we got a little sleet wheat farm going here, and really little because there's just one of them, and it's 68% grown here. But it's growing. Now you gotta make sure when you start off with this room, you gotta keep it uh, below five degrees as well. So I've got some radiant pipe here, which kind of cools down the room as well with the water. Kind of stabilizes the temperature in here. And if it gets too cold, I got a little space heater in here. So if the temperature um, is below zero, it'll kick on for a few seconds, kind of warm up the area and kind of keep the temperature between zero and five degrees in here. So I don't recommend growing sleet wheat domestically just because the uh, the amount of dirt you need and the amount of water you need is just kind of crazy. More on, more on the dirt side. You would have to make sure your dirt is pre-cooled as well because if you bring in hot dirt in here, it'll heat up the whole room. Yeah, so that's my little setup here. Wherever you have um, uh, like this valve here, it's exposed out in in kind of the temperature of this room. So you gotta make sure, um, like if this room is really hot, uh, the, it could potentially heat up the water going through this valve. All these pipes are abyssalite, by the way, and all the bridges are abyssalite, except for this radiant pipe here, which is just refined metal. I'll do the power overlay. Uh, so the shutoff valves need a little tiny amount of power. Aqua tuner needs 1200 watts, so I got two hydrogen generators here. And the automation overlay. There's the standard setup for the batteries here, but then for the, uh, the temperature, temperature sensor. What is this thing called? The liquid pipe thermo sensor. It's connected to the shutoff valve. So maybe I'll just slow this down. So if the temperature is above 16, um, turn off the shutoff valve. And here it goes, it just flipped, it got a packet that was um, above 16, so it was 30, that packet was 32 degrees. So turn on the shutoff valve which will force the water to go this way, down, I think. <laughs> yes, <laughs> down. It's a little bit confusing just because it's kind of the reverse of what you want because of the shutoff valve. But with those two settings, you should uh, it should work for you pretty nicely. Now, what I set up over here, I did a little experiment. I tried to cool down a room a lot. So there's four Wii's warts in here. It's minus 86. And I pumped some water in here. So the water in here is at minus 52, but it's not freezing and it's not causing any issues. Which is kind of interesting because you could, uh, you could send in water in an abyssalite pipe into a, into like an ice biome with a really cold ice biome and you could grow the water that way, or grow the sleet wheat that way, and not worry about freezing. 
So this might actually be a preferable method. Because it's, uh, it's a lot simpler. As long as the water going in is not too warm. So that it would overwhelm this. And it probably would because water has a high mass. But if you have a lot of cooling compared to the amount of hydroponic tiles, you might be fine. You could also do all this water cooling with using a ton of Weezworts or the uh, Nullifier, but I thought the Equituner would be probably the the fastest way to do it. The easiest way. Maybe not, though. So that's my little guide. Um, I did some calculations in terms of sleet wheat. Uh, you need each sleet wheat well, each stoop needs a thousand calories per cycle. And you get about one grain you get 18 grains um, out, of, out of 18 cycles. So you get one grain per cycle. And you need, need 2.5 grains to feed a, a full dupe, depending on whether you make uh, frost buns or pepper bread. So 2.5 grains. Uh, so that's a lot of uh, that's a lot, a lot of water and dirt just to keep one dupe alive. I did some other calculations here. So if you had a colony with 10 dupes, and you ran it for a thousand cycles. Um, you need 125 tons of dirt, which might be possible on some maps, just in terms of the dirt you start with. You'd, otherwise, you'd have to generate your own dirt, which you can do with the sieve in combination with the uh, compost. Uh, there's other ways you can make dirt as well, but using paku and algae and stuff. But okay, I didn't want to make this a very long episode uh, maybe I'll look at temperature overlay just do all the overlays I think I went through them all all the important ones yep so I'd love to hear your comments on whether you think uh, growing sleet wheat domestically is a good idea or not I think bristle blossoms are probably much much better or just wild sleet wheat just because bristle blossoms are really easy just because they all they require is water and light they don't require anything else and water is you know if you get a good geyser you got unlimited water and if you got uh, dupe power or solar power or any kind of other power you got unlimited power but you can't get that plus five um, morale bonus from the food sorry the morale bonus is much higher but the plus five quality food let's just throw a grill down here and look at some of that food so pepper bread is plus five it's the best you need 10 sleet wheat grain plus pinch of pepper stuffed berry stuffed berry is pretty good food it's pretty easy to grow a uh, pinch of pepper nut but probably the simplest is something like um, maybe not crystal berry but it's it's decent you could also do I don't want this to turn into a food guide, but berry, berry sludge is pretty awesome if you got sleet wheat. It's plus three. But anyway, that's it for this uh, experiment uh, contraption. If you've got uh, better builds, better designs, let me know. I did some Googling around and I found some cool designs out there for growing sleet wheat like this. And much, I, I, just different ways of doing it. I wanted to do it kind of on my own first and see how it went, so. Enough of me rambling on. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.